Happy Monday, everybody, and happy Iowa Caucus Day. Uh, today, I'm going to pause. We said we were going to talk about the second round of scoreboard today. I'm actually going to just do a mini pause in that, um, and we're going to talk about culture and energy. We're doing that because you see when we take the pause button off, uh, we actually will be talking about culture and energy within our scoreboard. So uh, just a couple of logistical things, and I might break this into two videos so that I don't um, screw up too much. But logistically speaking, Mr. Mike, who is sitting right over by my side, is going to be making sure that you know what our scoreboard uh, – goal is for the month um, and we're looking at setting that plan today where we'll be tracking happy hearts so look for a little more information from him on that we'll be sharing it with the therapist too it will tie into the happy heart rollout that we're gonna be doing which has the um, computer in the back and the chocolate kisses or the chocolate hearts that are in my office so Amy Mike and I will be working on that this week and we will get all of that rolled out and it will be a great month to celebrate good energy, celebrate happy hearts, being Valentine's Day month as well. And then uh, we're going to have an opportunity for a team bonus win, and that will be a team outing of your choice. We'll pick a restaurant to go to, um, or teams in the past have um, opted to come over to our house, um, and we get some good food delivered in, and then we get to play games and just uh, learn a little bit more about each other. We're looking for a good bonding experience win. So that is the logistical part of this. Uh, what I wanted to do today was talk to you about why culture is so important to me and how it is um, shown in balance and how we can actively live it. So again, this might be two parts because I just want to get all these thoughts out. If you need to watch them in two parts, that is a-okay. Just make sure you're commenting and engaging like we've been talking about in the past so that we know where we are and we can all have conversations with each other. I'm going to be linking a, a PDF of a blog post that I wrote in August of 2015 that does a really good concrete storytelling of the lessons that I've learned about culture, the tipping point, and all of that. So um, I'm going to ask that you read that. I've also printed a copy that I will keep at one of the front desks so that it fits easier to read. It's a few pages long. Um, I was then asked to guest blog uh, for a women's leadership uh, team and this was the blog entry that we used for that too so um, to me it really does tell the story of when we started to realize how important culture was and what we did to to make it great at balance um, I'll be referencing some of those talking points uh, in these videos so I think it's important to slow down and talk about this at this point in the year because the front desk team has two, um, there's myself, Mike and Chris who have been with us for years and then Danielle, Ivy and Amy who are newer to us last year. And I think that this gap in length of time at balance um, shows itself by how we're living our culture right now. So one, I wanted to acknowledge that. And then two, I just wanted to see um, how we could spend some time infusing into this current team we have all the things that make balance great. So culture is important to balance because it is really the heart of who we are. And when you interview for us, you've already read the application and filled out uh, the application. You've read the, the hiring ad, filled out the application. You get a sense of who we say we are. Um, when you come in, we train you from yes and, the service rep or day one, asking you to be a part of it. And then it's a matter of what are we all bringing to it each day. So culture is a concept. It's this philosophical idea of who we want to be as a company. What makes culture live is the people inside of it. They're the ones that literally give it voice. Um, we, we water what already exists to cultivate the culture garden uh, for the team that currently exists. So Mike, Chris, and I went through this journey together, the one that you'll be reading about, and we shared a lot of those same experiences from different roles, from different perspectives, but they were shared team experiences, which helped us really work to create the culture we wanted to be a part of. Throughout the years, we lived that fully, especially when it was new to us. We knew that when we defined yes and and taught it, we wanted to hear it, we wanted to feel it. We knew that when we defined the anatomy of service, we wanted to build on the yes and service wrapper. We knew when we had all these things, what we wanted them to be. And then we lived it really well for a period of time. And then like anything, you get used to doing it and you don't think about it as much. We really kind of became unconsciously competent 
in being active inside our culture. Well, you remember from your training, unconscious competence can lead you to kind of just getting a little lax because you're not really able to talk about or be present with what it is you're doing that makes you consciously competent or consciously confident is another way to say it. So we invited our new teammates in. We kind of didn't rise up to the challenge of living in conscious competence while we walked you guys up through it. We gave you the trainable concepts. We invited you into the process and then we got busy, which is what really happens every day. We just get busy doing our things. And you've probably enjoyed being a part of our culture. You probably think it's really good, and it is. Don't get me wrong, I am so proud of where we are. But I wanna challenge us to keep thinking about it, to all be present in it, so that we are all living every day in conscious competence inside of our culture, and that we never fall into the unconscious competent zone where we're just doing it without thinking. You might think that that's a win, and in most days it might be, but if there are days that we're just kind of doing it without thinking, we might not be doing it as well as we could if we put the energy into it. So let's start with the basic service wrapper. We named it a service wrapper on purpose. It's these three definable concepts or trainable, coachable concepts that allow us to give good service to each other and to our clients and the community at large. Yes and? Superpower of thank you and treating everybody like your most important person. We called it a wrapper because the belief is, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, the belief is that if we wrap every interaction that we have with these concepts, then we will all have better days. We will all leave here with more energy than we started with. We will feel it from other people and in turn we will want to give it. It is hard to live that all the time, to always be on, but that's the challenge and the joy and the privilege of being a part of the balance team. Whether you're here for 15 hours a week or 20 hours a week, or if you're here 40 hours a week, when we become part of the team, we learn that culture is important to us. And part of our job is to rise up to that culture and to understand that the words we choose matter, that the way we choose to interact with each other matters, and that every day, we can work to have a positive impact on the world around us. That's part of what's inspiring us in our 45s this week, that our mission really is this, this livable thing that helps us have a positive impact on everybody we come in contact with. But we're gonna fail some days because we're human and we've got things going on outside of work or we're tired, we didn't sleep well, or we, we, we don't feel well. These are the things we talk about all the time with you too. We want to be a safe place. We want to be able to have honest conversations. And we even have a definable uh, concept in that called parachute. We can all parachute in and help out with each other. But remember, culture is also energy. And we've been talking about energy in these past videos. And how are we going to um, count energy? How are we going to map it out during the course of our week? How does it impact ourselves? Are we being honest with how we feel at the start of a shift or the end of the shift? What I want you to think about is why do you like working in balance? What was one of the draws when you were here? If you sit down and think about the good times that you've had here or, or the way you might talk about it with your friends or your significant others, what would be the things that you say you like most about balance? A lot of times you're going to say you get a free massage and that's fair. But a lot of times I've often heard teammates tell me how much they just appreciate how nice everybody is and what the energy feels like and our culture. And that should be what you say. Those should be the things that make a business stand out unless you love doing confirmation calls. If that's your thing, then that can be your thing. But most people like to feel valued and rewarded and cared for no matter where they are. And not a lot of people get that in the workplace. So that being part of our balanced culture is a really important part of who we are. So as you think about that, pause to also think about how do you contribute to that? How do you make people feel happy? How do you bring positive energy? We all do. We all do in really good, tangible ways. There are ways that you might be unconsciously incompetent of. You might just show up nice and that infuses energy. Read some of the happy hearts that people have written about you. Is there a theme? Do you see things that make people happy? Is it you're super organized? You're super good listener? You tell funny stories? <clears throat> These are your attributes that you bring to the culture. And we all bring attributes. When we say watering our culture, that means a collective group of people 
bringing their gifts and talents and energy to the culture. That's what watering is. So you water it every day. But even in the best intended garden, we can have weeds and we can be the weeds someday. And that's okay. Because again, we understand the importance of being there for each other and helping. So think about the ways maybe every now and then you pop up a weed in the garden. I know I can be. I can be very intense energy that might transmit through the front desk team just by, just by osmosis with me being here. And I try to be aware of that. What we want to think about when we start our days through the Define the Shift or through sharing with people is how are we watering the garden today? How are we watering the culture? What are the things we're doing to bring good energy so that there isn't a gap between the expectation of what you we say we are and the experience of what you feel. Now this is the tricky part. There can also not be a gap between the expectation of what we say we are and the experience of what you give. Because how you feel is because somebody else is giving that to you. Does that make sense? How you feel inside a culture at work is because of the surroundings that you've been given. And we are all a part of giving something back to each other. And that's really the heart of how we want to keep growing this. As you read the blog post after this, listen to the parts or read the parts in there that are talking about the learning lessons we had, the denial years, the change years, the tipping point, how we realized at times there were three ways people could respond to things that we were trying to implement. They could be inspiring, they could be neutral, or they could be detractors. And we realized neutral wasn't bad, detractors will kill you, and inspiring is gonna help you get over the hump. Well, I think every day we have the potential to be inspiring. We can't do it every day, but we have the potential. And the days that we can't rise to the level of inspiring for whatever reason, we can be neutral. We can come in, we can share what we can share, we can ask for help where we need it, and we can do our best to take the positive energy that's given to us, knowing that we will return, give that back. My mom used to always say to us when we were children that this family is like a bank, and you're gonna be able to take out of it what you put in. And this sentiment is in our original vision of 2016. And this resonated the most to me when my dad had heart surgery. And I took about a month off to go home and help my mom run the store. And I got a card back from my dad thanking me and saying, I'm sure this wasn't how you wanted to spend your summer vacation. And I remember writing him back and, th and saying, you've contributed so much to this bank that you're just running on interest. Like you've got as much as you want. And then when he passed away, I was able to go home and live with my mom and help her. And again, just giving back what they'd given to me. So those are some of the feelings and when I, when I started a business and we wanted to focus on community, that's where that comes from. How can we give to you guys and, and let you know how you can help give back to continue to make balance great? And with all that said, we're doing a great job. This actually comes because I think Mike, I'm gonna just say Mike and I, probably could do a little bit more right now to keep leading on what we want you to hear. Leading with service, to saying yes to you, but giving you the explored and heightened ands, to finding ways to thank you for concerns you have or, or client needs that you give to us with opportunities to learn, and to make sure you do feel like our MIP, always. Because being on part of this team, we recognize you could spend your talents and your days anywhere, and we value the fact that you want to do it with us. I'm going to conclude this video by just asking you to, to, to challenge Mike and I to live that, to live that leadership, to listen for thank yous. The next video, we're gonna talk about how we can assess it. And I might pause on that and tie it into a role play video. We might be able to tie this back into the scoreboard. But these all tie together, all these things we're talking about, from energy to culture to scoreboard. A good business has heart, it also has logic, it has, 
it has people, it has personalities, it has customers, it has its own heartbeat. So when you're hearing these things, don't hear them in one-offs. Don't think it's Monday, what are we talking about now? Think of how these are all coming together, how they can impact you today, how they can impact how you're gonna operate tomorrow. And for you, whether you plan on being here six months or six years, how are they gonna impact you as a human so that when you go forward, you can share some of these lessons and you are going to work at a business someday that does not have a set culture or one that is as committed to, to continuing to root it. And how can you be inspiring in those times too? All right, thank you so much for listening. I look forward to the next series in this and I know we're gonna do another series in scoreboards. Um, I look forward to your comments and feedback. Uh, please make sure to comment on the um, post that you're gonna be reading too and uh, we'll continue this conversation. Thanks guys, I appreciate it, bye.